This video will introduce you to post-structuralism as a research paradigm. If we think about the ontology of post-structuralism, which is its understanding of the nature of reality, we see that reality is a highly contextual concept. There are a number of different movements that are captured under the banner term post-structuralism. You might also think of postmodernism, interpretivism, symbolic interactionism, and so on. All these movements have a few things in common, and that's that they tend to focus around the idea of interpretation and how we come to understand and give meaning to the things around us. Most of the time, that's via language, or as Foucault would call it, discourse. A post-structuralist epistemology, which is their understanding of how we come to know things, would see knowledge as contextual and unstable, and we can trace its representations. Some of the disciplines that most actively use post-structuralist approaches might be literary analysis or gender studies. Foucault's work is a classic of the genre, which traces the way concepts like madness, discipline, sexuality have all been produced fairly recently, and that these discourses are unstable and they've evolved out of past ideas, not necessarily out of material historical circumstance. Post-structuralists see our lives as the products of discourse, the stories we tell. We shift and we change and narrative underpins identity, but not grand narratives. Post-structuralism tends to reject grand narratives like Marxism and critical theory, or even something like science and the ideas of the Enlightenment. The archetype I've chosen of this type is Westworld's Dr. Ford. And you might think this is strange because he's an artificial intelligence engineer, he creates robots. He seems to be an adherent of post-positivist or even positivist science. But Dr. Ford is obsessed with narrative. And Westworld is a very clever show because it plays with our sense of narrative and our position in the story. It incorporates references to the viewer themselves. And in Dr. Ford's final speech in season one, it's almost as though he's speaking to HBO's audience about their attraction to violence. Since I was a child, I've always loved a good story. I believe that stories helped us to ennoble ourselves, to fix what was broken in us, and to help us become the people we dreamed of being. Lies that told a deeper truth. Dr. Ford is obsessed with narrative, and that's a fairly post-structural approach to life. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the most obviously post-structuralist film would be Guardians of the Galaxy. Deadpool would be an even better example, but let's stick to the MCU for now. Guardians of the Galaxy works because it is a metatextual film. It comments on the fact that it is a superhero film. It takes the piss a little bit. Guardians of the Galaxy is conscious of the fact that it is a discourse, a superhero discourse. You only have to look at the way Peter Quill constantly has to tell people that his name is Star-Lord, that he's a superhero, and nobody seems to believe him. If a post-structuralist looked at the city of London, they might ask a question like, what is a city? They might trace the genealogy of the idea of a city. They would argue that the city of London isn't a stable construct, but an idea that has evolved over time, and that it means different things to different people. The Romans knew this area as Londinium. Australians have for 100 years, or even more, understood it in different ways. And different people within Australia understand it in different ways. Within London itself, it's never fully understood as one absolute thing, but a mix and a mess of ideas. And that's what language does. 